And now we come to the gospel. These cycles, A, B, and C, all develop this same mystery of the Trinity differently. What we have now in uh, this text is the Trinity named. Uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I showed you some. I could show you many more texts. As I think I told you, just in the writings of Paul, there are something like 50 times he mentions. See, but he might mention like God, Lord, Spirit. He doesn't always say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but that's what he means. Uh, that's who he's talking about. So, it's common speech without being articulated into uh, one way of saying it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. All right. So now we're going to look at Matthew 28, the final commission that our Lord gives to the disciples. So we're back up in Galilee at his command. And so the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus, to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. How can this be? He's alive? I mean, he's standing there? You see? There are other ways to translate it. Some doubt it. Ide edistasen. Edistasen. But, um, in other words, either all of them or some of them said, who is this? What's going on? Jesus is dead. You see? You know what? We live a lot like that. We wouldn't say it, of course. But do you think Jesus is alive, living with you, helping you, living in you, guiding you, loving you, forgiving you, all the time? So you're like these people. You know, if I said, is Jesus alive? You'd say yes. But an hour from now, I say, you're thinking about Jesus alive, or what you're thinking now is in, in conformity with what Jesus is alive? No. I'm frightened, I'm scared, I'm mad, I'm something. What about Jesus? You're baptized into his death. Okay. So, that's what this text is about, okay? So the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. And then Jesus approached and listen to what he says. See, There is given to me all authority, all power in heaven and on earth. I, this is Christ the King. I have all authority. Nothing happens on your globe that I don't allow or actually do. So don't be afraid. But preach my name. Let people come to know me, love me, and trust me. I promise you that if my Catholic Church alone would preach with fervor and love and enthusiasm, there would be peace in this world. But we don't. We don't doubt if it's... Do you believe in Jesus as the Son of God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all day, what's on our mind? Even the devout, we say a few prayers in the morning and then off we go. And at night, I'm sorry for my sins and off to bed. What about living with him? What about loving him? Be aware, like the backdrop. You know, when somebody falls in love, every spare moment they get, where does their mind go? To Joe or to Helen, you know? It just happens. That's the way we should be aware of the Lord. Now, the should is not that we can do it. Just like you should be aware of your boyfriend. No. You should get to know him, and then you'll always be aware of your boyfriend. That's what this is saying, you see. Um, so Jesus came and he said this, I have all exousia in heaven and on earth. Going, therefore... You see? Um, going, or go, to make any difference. Therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. 
That's quite a task. You know, there's 11 or 12 guys there, and uh, they're all, uh, you know, um, working class people. There's no scholar among them. And there's 12 of them huddled together on a mountain. (laughs) And Jesus says, now from here, go out to the whole world and preach what you know. And behold, you see, well first, uh, baptizing them is not enough to teach them. Why this baptism? Isn't this a ceremony? No. You see, John the Baptist was sent. He's a prophet. He was sent by a prophetic word to, to uh, offer to the Jewish people this conversion rite by which they accepted their full responsibility to be Jews, had a conversion, acknowledged their sins as the synoptic tell us, you see. So it imitated a conversion rite. But John was saying, you see, I'm baptizing you with water. God coming after me is one who will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Now, what does that mean? One of the ways that the prophets spoke about that last moment when God would be fulfilling all his promises to Israel, they talked about pouring out the Spirit. You can, there in, it's in um, Jeremiah 36, uh, Isaiah 44, Joel 3, oh, there's about there's a six or eight or more of these, where that definitive eschatological moment is spoken about as pouring out the Spirit. So John is baptizing, and you know, as a preparation for the Messiah. Then Jesus comes and accepts his vocation as an Israelite, which is what? To die on the cross. And he goes into that water, plunges himself dies in that water, comes up again, totally committed to the Father's plan to die and rise again. That's why the Father says, there he is, that's my son, my well-beloved in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. He's getting ready to save you. The first thing Jesus does is go out into the desert and take on Satan and beat him. Clear the way. Finding the strong man. And so, you see, now, and then he continued to baptize. He may have continued just sort of like John, calling people. But then he called his own death a baptism. You see, I have a baptism with which I am to be baptized. So then Paul instructed, you see, knowing this from these, this uh, order of Jesus, huh? He saw that that baptism, even if we're this big, you see, plunges us into that act of love in which Jesus died. That's what baptism is. Our whole life, here and hereafter, is grounded on that moment when we were baptized. And when that baptism was repaired, if we lost the life of God, the life of the Trinity... God gave us a way to to repair it and get back on track. Mercy. Think, here's my divine life. Take care of it. You didn't? Tough bananas. No. I'll give you a remedy even for that. That's our Father. So baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is Trinity Sunday. One God who is Father, the source of all in the Trinity and Son, the receiver of all in the Trinity, and Spirit, the bond between giver and receiver. That's God. He's not solitary king up there, direct in this world. He is an infinitely joyful communion of persons. Infinitely joyful. Loving so much that they want to share it with us and bring us to share that life forever. So even when 
humankind sinned and it was cut off. The plan was that one of the Trinity would come to earth, teach us all over again. Don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't gather up all that stuff, you know, like this man I'm telling you in the parable. Tonight, you're going to die. Simple things we should be able to figure out by ourselves. But more than that, taking all our sins into himself and giving them all back in forgiveness to the Father. That's baptism. And so, to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is to be plunged into the most ineffable reality in all of existence, the infinite, divine, blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On this feast day, take some time to go along and say, Lord, can you show me what this means? Can you teach me? And if you listen, the Lord will give you an understanding of the Father that will start this process. Then you'll love the Father. You'll share in a tiny way in that furnace of love that is the heart of Christ for the Father. Like a human being, you'll love God by the power of the Holy Spirit who moves that in you. That's what it means to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It means to enter into the divine life and to be caught up in it so that even in this life we realize that we're caught up in this rhythm of the Father pouring himself out the Son pouring Himself back, and the Spirit sealing that. And we're in that rhythm. We're there, even in this life. And we can hardly get our mind off the next cup of coffee. We are living that life. That's why, my friends, the Lord says always, pray, pray, pray. And Our Lady says, say the rosary. Get used to praying. Say the creed the Our Father, the Hail Marys, and between them say what? Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning before anything was, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All of these things have become formulas. Better have them than nothing. But now, at this Trinity Sunday, in this very important year of crucial decision and some suffering and darkness, let us go to God and worship Him with joy. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Father, I can hardly wait to see You. Jesus, I know Your words, but I want to see Your face. Spirit, I know You move in me, Take over for all eternity. Be the way that I live and breathe, that my existence, even my body existence, comes from you, divine, holy, ineffable person. I'm looking forward to that. I don't deserve it. I deserve hell. But I'm looking forward to it. And I'm so glad we have this feast when I can honor you, stop everything else, and think about where I'm going. Amen.